<laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Bill Troutman, and I am your Math 1332 instructor. Um, today, what I want to do is let you know what's going to be on test number one. What? Yes, I'm going to tell you what is on test number one. Um, I'm looking through the test right now. There are 20 questions. All 20 questions are multiple choice. So all you had to do is pick the correct answer. Um, and that's it. Uh, and get through it. Um, it still might not be as e easy uh, if you haven't done the homework and stuff. But if you've done the homework, you've taken notes, um, I think you're um, good to go, ready to go for this course. Um, so on test one, what can you use? All right. Um, first thing you can use is any calculator. Uh, but no cell phone calculators. Okay, so you can use a calculator, but no cell phone. Is that how you spell so no cell phones? Uh, any calculator you want, no cell phone calculators. Number two, you can use any notes you take. What? Yes, any notes you take, you can use it. Hopefully, while you're doing your homework, you've been taking notes. <laughs> uh, yes, you may use notes. Um, the workbook that I put in the beginning of the course, you can use your notes. You can also use your workbook. So any notes uh, and your workbook you're allowed to use. And by the way, your notes and workbook you can use for all tests except the final exam. On the final exam, you're only allowed one page of notes. But on this test, you can use as many notes as you want. Um, you have a calculator, all the notes that you want, uh, and that's it. <laughs> I think that should be enough. Um, no outside electronic devices, no electronic devices. I don't want to see a phone in the room with you. I don't want to hear a phone ring. I don't want to see a tablet. I don't want to see another laptop or another computer. Uh, you should be in a room alone with the, the computer that you're using, your notes, and a calculator. So that's what you may use on the test. Um, all right. Hopefully that answers that part. All right, so for the rest of the test, let's find out what type of questions we have. Um, I'm just going to go through the test. It may not be in order, but it may be pretty close to the order. Um, can you plot this point? Uh, this is a rectangular in a rectangular coordinate system. Can you plot this point, right? Negative 5, 7. There, I just did it. <laughs> There's the point I plotted. Can you plot a point? Oh, how hard is that? That's a question on a test. And it's multiple choice. You just have to pick the correct dot. Um, question. The next question. Um, can you graph this? Can you graph this on a number line? Um, and on the number line... We're using, um, uh, just in case it's a little different from what you're used to, but on a number line, when it's greater than or equal to, if we had the greater than or equal to symbol or the less than or equal to symbol, we would use a closed in circle. A, a greater than or a less than symbol, we would use an open circle. 
closed in circle is the same thing as using brackets that you might have used in the homework uh, or parentheses for this one in the homework. This means it's touching. This is not touching. So for this problem, I take the seven to the other side and get X is greater than two. Nine minus seven is two. So here is zero, here's two. X is greater than two. This is how I would graph it. If, if the problem was X is greater than or equal to two, then you would post a circle with a filled in circle and then going greater than uh, two. Okay, so see the difference between less than and greater than. And I'm uh, moving along. Um, X over five minus X over eight equals uh, seven over 10. Uh, can you solve? What does solve mean? Solve means tell me what X equals. All right. Tell me what X equals on a problem like this. Find an example. See if you can do it. How about a problem like this? Um, do, 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 do. Six, six X plus nine Y minus 17 plus eight Y minus seven X. Do you see how there's no uh, equal sign in this problem? This problem just says simplify. What does that mean? It means combine like terms. Uh, there's no equal sign. So we're not finding X or Y. We're just combining all the terms that we can. We're simplifying, doing all the math we possibly can. And then you might have a problem like this. Five times uh, X plus seven equal, or sorry, minus, not equals, minus 20. And it's going to say simplify. Once again, simplify means do all the math you possibly can. Distribute and then combine like terms. Find problems similar to these um, on the test. Um, what about something like 6x to the third minus 2x plus 8? And then we have this, uh, this with x equals 4. What It says evaluate. Evaluate means plug the numbers into the letters. Here's the, the, the problem we're going to evaluate. We're evaluating by making X equal to 4. So everywhere there's an X. I'm putting a 4 into the equation. I'd put it in, uh, right? Everywhere there's an X, we're putting a 4 into there. And then you're going to do the math. Using the order of operations, you find the answer and do the math. That's an evaluate problem. And we have another one of those very similar, except we might have X's and Y's. And they're going to have maybe X equals one and Y equals two. And then everywhere there's an X, you plug a one in. Every there's a place there's a Y, you plug a 2 in, and then you evaluate. Then you do the math and tell me what it equals. All righty. 18 minus 4 plus 7, 8 plus two uh, minus 100. 
uh, it's just going to say use the order of operations. Then do the math in the proper order. So use the order of operations. Sorry, it was hard to see the operations. There we go. Still pretty messy. The order of operations. Uh, remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P stands for do all parentheses first. Everything in the parentheses. Exponents do all powers next. This is multiply and divide. You all, do all multiply and divide from right to left. And then add and subtract. You have to do also do those from right to left. As though you're reading a book. Okay, let's see. There's another order of operations, one very similar to this. Uh, I'm just going to not write it down. There's another order of oper. So there's three order of operations in a, in, a, in a row. Make sure you do many problems. There's three problems with order of operations. So make sure you know, go to that order of operations section in your homework or in the workbook and make sure you know how to do those types of problems. All right. Um, 7x plus 3 equals 9x plus 7. This problem says solve. So you're just going to tell me what x equals, right? Solve means tell me what x equals. Go through the steps for solving by getting x on one side, everything else to the other. So you should be able to do that. There's another solve problem, very similar. Another solve problem, very similar. Um, so uh, there's, there's at least four solve problems. Four of these types of problems, 6x plus 9 equals 22. So problems like this, 1.2x plus 6.3 equals 9.5. Can you do these solve for X type of problems? Look for them uh, in your workbook or the homework and do them. Um, another graphing. X is less than or equal to negative 57. <laughs> if I'm going to graph on the X axis, here's zero. Here's negative 57. Less than negative 57 is this way. X is less than negative 57. Since there's no equal sign, we use the open hole. So this is what the graph would look like. If it was an equal sign... It would look like this one with a closed hole because it equals negative 57. Here it doesn't equal negative 57, but this equal sign says it does equal negative 57. So you have to fill that hole in. Uh, in interval notation, we use parentheses when we have a hole and brackets when it's a filled in hole. Another graphing problem. Ooh, see if you can do this graphing problem. Find a graphing problem similar to this. Uh, 
this is x is between these two numbers so if i was going to put it on a graph here's zero here's seven here's twelve x is between seven and twelve and since they're both equal uh one they're both filled in um if we did this i'm gonna put one down here if it looked like this the 12 is equal but the 7 is not that's what it would look like it, the the since the 7 is not equal it would be a open circle Can you graph? See, look at the difference between this graphing problem and the previous ones. In the previous ones, we just had X's. In this one, we have X's and Y's, so you have to graph it on a Cartesian coordinate system. How would you graph this? Uh, I'll let you do that. And this multiple choice, you just have to pick the correct answer. We have another one. Uh, graph this. Five X plus Y equals 15. Graph finding the intercepts. So you would find the x-intercept and y-intercept and graph the two. You just have to pick the correct answer. Um, there's another graphing. Y equals two-thirds x plus seven. Can you graph something like that? And can you find the slope? Finally, the last question. Sorry, <laughs> it's not letting me write. Can you find the slope uh, if you have two points? Uh, let's say it's 50 or 5, 125, and 19. 250. Can you find the slope? And do you know the slope formula when you have two points? What are what is the slope formula when you have two points? And how do you know which one of these numbers goes into which spot to do the math? All right. So that is the test. That's the review. I just went over the test and showed you what it is. It's not the same problems. I picked very similar problems, but that is the test. If um, you have some time now, look at it, uh, study these questions, find similar ones in the homework or in your workbook and be able to do them. Call me if you have any questions or email me. You guys have a uh, good study time.